Hi everybody, my name is Max Maker and this week I want to build a custom bin for one of these kitchen cabinets right here. So this is my kitchen and this space in the front, it used to be empty. We always had a box there that we put small cardboard items in there and paper. Uh, but we have this cabinet made now and on top we've got a drawer for some common tools that I always need in the household. And I've got this hatch right here that's supposed to be for just cardboard. So small stuff like this I want to throw in there and I want to make a custom bin for this. So this is the basic shape of the box and I think we can make this front panel and the two sides out of one big sheet by bending it and this is it. I start by actually checking if the sheet is square because if it's not nothing will line up at the end and then I can start with the layout. So I will mark out all the lines that I will bend at uh, and I will bend it into the C shape so I've got uh, half the box pretty much done or even a little bit more. Uh, and it's really important to check and double check this quite often so you don't mess up, as you will see later. And I'm cutting this with this nibbler that's really great for cutting uh, sheet metal and uh, thin aluminium stuff. It doesn't create any dust, which is always nice. And the best thing is, it just creates one single chip. It's good practice to file down the corners a little bit, makes everything a bit nicer. Okay, so now I want to bend this along this edge right here. And you could take a piece of wood, clamp it down on here so uh, this can't move. Take two pieces of wood, clamp them like so, and then bend the whole package down or upwards. I've got a sheet metal press, so I'm going to use that instead. And in case if you're wondering why I'm wearing a hat and all these layers, it was minus 17 degrees outside, uh, which we call a Russian winter in Germany. And it doesn't happen very often, so I had to go out from time to time and uh, clear the snow that night. So this is the sheet metal press and this has teeth. And the great thing about that is you can remove some teeth to get more clearance. So you put a piece in there, clamp it down and then you fold it up and it has a stop so you can dial it into 90 degrees exactly. And that's it, it's a really really simple process. So now I take the big sheet, put it inside and I've got this height adjustable workbench uh, and that's really nice because I can use it as an outfit table for any of my tools. So I'm adjusting it uh, so the end doesn't flop down. And now I can align it properly, clamp it down of course, make sure your thumbs are not underneath the teeth, that really hurts, I did it a few times. And then you do the bending. So really simple and you just have to figure out where exactly you have to align uh, your bend lines to get the bend at the right size. So uh, I know it for this machine and it can vary from machine to machine. Uh, and that is really, really quickly. Uh, you just have to put some time into the setup. So now it's time to add some more features to this bland looking box and I'm going to use this machine for that. It's a roll bender and I made this little fixture so I can uh, position it on my workbench really easily and quickly set it up and take it down again. Uh, you can also put this into a vise but you don't have as much clearance with that. So this is one of these Chinese bead rollers and there are a ton of companies that sell exactly the same model on the internet. The only difference is I added a little bit of webbing back here to stop this from flexing. Not even sure if that's necessary. I'm not really an expert with this machine yet. Uh, and I added this uh, star knob. Before that was just a normal screw and I always ne needed to use a spanner. And you need to adjust this uh, quite a lot. So all you do is um, you crank this down and this kind of pushes the top die into the bottom die. A really simple machine uh, and it's really cheap as well. I think you pay mostly for shipping because it's so heavy uh, and you can make all kinds of features. So I'm starting the layout right here and now I'm cranking it through and it uh, slowly pass by pass presses the contour into the uh, aluminium. Uh, just one thing that I forgot is uh, with this added webbing, I cannot go all the way to the end into the inside of the corner. Uh, so I could only make the feature in the middle here, but I think it still looked nice at the end. The first pass you have to go really slowly to stay online. Uh, that's a bit tricky and I think I'm still learning. But overall I'm quite happy with the outcome of this. Uh, this is the first time of me using this on an actual project and I think you can work with this. The only downside to bead rolling is that it causes distortion. You see this is now kind of bi-stable. I can bend it like this and it stays or I bend it like this. So there's some uh, stress in this panel that you just have to work with. There's just one thing I forgot. If I want to rotate this whole box over, this corner sticks out. So I need to cut these corners off, but that's be easy now. If you want to cut out the bottom, I recommend doing it at the end, so then you can measure exactly the right dimensions that you need for this. This is 25.6 wide. So the bottom will be uh, shaped just like a pan in the oven basically and I'm notching out these corners so I can bend up the sides. 
so if you want to make a pan like this, you need a press brake with removable teeth, otherwise you can only bend profiles. And you will see why now, because the first bend is normal, but the second one, or the third and fourth, uh, you have to remove some teeth to get clearance uh, to push the pan up. And that's one pan. And I made a little mistake, I cut it about 5 millimeters too short, so let's do it again. I was quite tired that night and I made several mistakes, uh, as you will see later. Uh, basically, this time I cut the pan too wide and it wouldn't fit the teeth anymore. So I had to do it again, twice more, and the third time actually worked. And this pan turned out absolutely perfect. It matches in every single corner, so uh, it was worth uh, cutting the other ones wrong and then just measuring the difference and making the pan a little bit longer. So this is the back side and this is also going to get some features, but I'm going to make the features first and then I will cut it to size, so we don't have any of the warping issues. So this time I'm going to form from one side to the other, so hopefully the uh, warping will be uniform, only in one direction and not in both directions. So this is the length before I'm rolling it. And to my surprise, we only lost one millimeter in length. This panel right here will go on the inside of this, so we don't have any more thickness because we're a bit close here. But if it's on the inside, it will butt up to this piece. And I want it to overlap onto this piece. So what we're going to do is try to make one of these flanges so we kind of step out and go down here. And I think these are the right uh, dies for that. I would like to get some more dies, but it's a bit difficult to find the right size uh, for this machine. I've got this new tool and it's really nice. Uh, it's an adjustable, yeah, it's like one of these things that you use for woodworking. I don't know the name. I don't have one of those woodworking ones. Uh, you can lock it down and then it's really easy to butt it up against edges and align stuff. All right. Beautiful. Obviously it's not straight, but I can live with this. So that will work just like so. Top part will be behind the part on the right and the bottom part will overlap over the bottom. And if you're a real professional, you take the wrong measurements and do it all over again. But this time you do it properly. So I will cut out these uh, little ears up here right now. And I will also cut some holes in here as hand holes. I wonder if I can form these beads first so I don't have any of the distortion because the beads go all the way around and then still be able to bend it. So I set this up right here. Not bad. Now with some thicker material. Okay, that's a plus point. On the thicker stuff, it doesn't form that crease. So I say this is pretty much perfect. I was totally rushing uh, the first one. I was just excited to do this project and I didn't plan ahead. So this time I'm cutting the handholds right now uh, before I bend anything and it's much easier. Uh, and I can mark everything while it's uh, lying flat on the table. So really, really simple. You can of course also use a jigsaw for this. And this time the protective film is also on the right side uh, where it actually protects the shiny surface that I want to have on the outside later. Okay, this looks already much better than what I made previously. So I guess it's, uh, it's a good thing that I uh, mismeasured earlier. Failure, success. Only cost me about 50 euros for the aluminium. Very nice, everything fits perfect. And I have some space down here to put the back panel inside. I was really lucky with this pan because this is the very first one that I built and I built too short but now the whole box is shorter so it actually fits. I didn't have to make it a fourth time. So I would say uh, this uh, fit up is really nice and now we should clamp everything down so it stays in this kind of shape and I'm using these specialized uh, tools uh, that are temporary little cleats, very low profile. Next up is joining these parts together and for that I'm going to use a whole lot of rivets. So all you have to do to set such a rivet is keep this face right here stationary while you pull this shank in this direction. And that will pull this bulb into the body of the rivet, like so. There are different ways to fasten these. One is this automatic rivet gun. You just press a button 
and that does the trick. And this shaft uh, kind of protrudes now, but you can put it back into the container in here. And there are different mouthpieces for this, uh, for different sized rivets. You want the one with the closest fit for your rivet. Uh, it's really cool, you have the tool right attached. Alternatively, you can use something like that. That is a manual rivet gun. Works just as well, just takes a little more, a bit more force and it hurts a little bit because as soon as uh, you crank it down, uh, the shaft uh, flies off basically, you tear it off and then you smash your hands into each other. So always be aware about that. They're good enough if you just have to do a few rivets, uh, but if you do a lot of them, like I do in my workshop, uh, you really want the automatic setter. And there's also a version uh, with pneumatics, but then you need a hose obviously for compressed air. So I went with the battery version. So that's my little introduction into rivets. So now let's set some on the actual workpiece. Uh, and we want to get the spacing absolutely right, because just like on jeans, they don't just hold things together, they're also decorative. Uh, so they have to look good. Um, and for that, I always mark the middle and then I make some marks uh, that go outside uh, to the left and the right, so they're perfectly symmetrical and that way uh, they look good at the end, even if the uh, spacing at the end isn't absolutely perfect. And here another shot of my beautiful height adjustable work table. Uh, it's awesome to just put it all the way down and then you can work on the top uh, without having to step on a ladder or something like that. The sheet metal stuff is uh, very soft, so you have really big burrs on the back side. And of course you want to remove them, otherwise the sheets won't sit flush against each other. So if we're drilling 60 holes right here for 60 rivets, uh, they need to be absolutely perfectly lined up to the uh, matching holes, otherwise uh, you can't join everything, because you can't just force a rivet in there. And for that I use these Clico pins. Uh, so Clico is the brand name as I said earlier, and these expand and contract again, and they are temporary rivets. So you drill one hole, put the rivet in, and that holds everything in place temporarily. And you can remove them later on, uh, but for now you can keep drilling some holes and whenever you drill a hole, you just add a Clico and nothing can move on you and everything will be aligned absolutely perfect at the end. It's a little bit difficult uh, to buy these Clicos, at least here in Germany. I couldn't find any German distributor, but I found one, an aircraft specialist in the UK that sells them. And I think they're much easier to get from America because the Americans use lots more rivets uh, than we do here in Germany. A great advantage of these Clicos is that you can take them apart and then reassemble everything. Or in our case right now, we can uh, do the final sanding of all the edges. The backside didn't look that nice, so I used some scotch bright pad on my orbital sander to make it actually not bright, but rather matte, so you don't see any of the scratches and the reflections. And if you want to buy some abrasives, I always recommend 3M products, they're really worth a little bit of extra money. And when I pulled down this foil and saw the shiny surface underneath, I really knew uh, this is the reward for doing all of this again. Uh, this box looks so much better than the first one. And this rivet setter is really a fantastic tool. So here we have three layers of steel and I don't have the right rivet size for this. But I have this poly grip rivet that has a huge range of material thicknesses. It works on pretty much anything from about 2 to 10 millimeters. Okay, the box is finished now. It won't come apart again. Now it's time to finish these sharp edges with some of this edge protection right here. You have to cut it with pliers because on the inside there's a little bit of steel wire. And that is there so it keeps its shape for a long time and it keeps clamping down on these edges. Uh, so it's really good stuff and uh, good to have around at the workshop. Uh, it's much better than filing something smooth because that just takes forever unless you're from Australia. Anyway, the box is done. Now we can fit it to the front of the door uh, and it almost didn't fit again <laughs> into the cabinet. But it just about fits so I'm really happy with that. And now of course I need to mount it to the back of the door and I'm making this really simple slot so you can put a screw in there and hook it on because it needs to be removable of course. This bin will fill up at some point and then I need to empty it out really easily so I'm just using two screws into the wood. So I guess the chance that you're going to build a custom bin like this is pretty small unless you own a coffee shop 
Uh, but I still hope this video inspired you to try out working with sheet metal. It's really easy, it's really fun and you don't even need that many tools. You can use a cordless drill and a jigsaw uh, and that will work most of the time. You don't even need the sheet metal press because you can buy pre-made angles for the corners. So thanks for watching everybody. My name is Max Maker and I make all kinds of stuff and I hope you subscribe to the channel. That would be really nice. Thanks for watching everybody.